it's been quite a few lessons now since we've talked about the built-in native functions that return uh, that return objects. We saw at that time that there was a date constructor function. And that date constructor function will return an object that allows us to work with dates. And so I just wanted to take a brief look at what it can do and how you can actually uh, work with date type information using the date object. So let's start off with a very simple case here. I'm going to say, hey, let today equals new date. And that will, by default, give us right now, this date and time. All right. So uh, what I can actually do is actually initialize that date object with a specific date using one of several different formats. So I may want to like create a date that represents my birthday. So I'm going to create a new date and I'm going to pass in. And this is interesting, right? Because if I look at IntelliSense, it has an up and down arrow. I can actually use the arrows on my keyboard and it will show me the various versions of constructors that are available with which to initialize the state object. So we can start off with something really simple and just kind of a full date, like December 7, 1969. And we'll give it a time even at 70123. Just guessing at the actual minute and second of my birth. I don't really know exactly. I know it was early in the morning, that's all. So that's one way to initialize uh, the date, but there's a couple of other ways. Um, and uh, let's just do like let Bob equals new date. And there's a file system date type that looks something like 1969-12 um, uh, for the month dash 07 and then T for time and then 07 because it's, you know, on a 24 hour schedule colon um, 01 colon 23 and that's roughly about the same these these two will create the same basic time all right there's also we could just kind of simplify things a little bit here using a different format just just give it um, the year month base zero and day I think base zero as well, though I haven't really, I'm not really entirely sure about that. Um, and then let Bob equals new date. It's kind of the same thing. Uh, 11, six, and then seven, one, uh, seven comma, one comma, 23. So I think these are about the same. I may be off by one. I forget if it's zero based or one based, but you can look that up fairly easily. I'm not gonna use these, but I just wanna show you that they exist, okay? But we have here now today's date and my original date, my birth date. And so what we can do is something interesting like get the time that's elapsed between those two dates by just saying um, um, var, Elapsed uh, time equals n uh, equals um, today minus Bob console dot log elapsed time and what it will get back to me is the number of milliseconds. All right, between those two between those two dates. So this is the number of milliseconds and then I could divide it out, calculate the years, the months, the days, the hours, minutes, and seconds if I wanted to. All right, so that's one thing that I can do is determine the elapsed milliseconds between two dates. You can also get parts of a given date. So I can go console.log, bob.getDate, and um, it returns seven. What does that represent? That res represents the day of the week. So in in this case, Monday would equal one and Sunday would equal seven, which seems a little backwards to me, but hey, that's what you get when you create a language and you set null equal object and other kind of quirks like that. Moving on, console.log, bob.getTime. And this will be represented the time of day in our date object. So 
that was uh, the number of milliseconds. And so that's a little bit less useful, but you can do other things. And let me just paste in a bunch of the, these all in one shot. You can get the month, the day, hours, minutes, seconds, and milliseconds. Um, and then there are also some additional date functions for things like conversion to UTC or universal time code and local dates and times. So converting back and forth between UTC and local date time. And that's pretty much what you can do with the date object. And so let's continue on in the next video. Thanks.